Welcome to this lesson, guys. To round out the particular aspects of this module, we need to start talking about layer three redundancy mechanisms. Now, in the confines of how Cisco implements layer three redundancy, we need to understand first and foremost that we're going to be focusing on certain situations. These situations are going to concern scenarios where we lose interconnectivity between networks. So what we're going to be looking at is how we can institute layer three redundancy redundancy whereby we can obtain the ability to have multiple gateways out of our infrastructure. And the best method that we're going to find to do this is to going to illustrate the idea of what it is we're talking about. So in the scenario where I have routers that are going to be employed in my infrastructure and I have access to say something like a server that we're connecting to, I have my switches down lower in my model and what we're going to have here is we're going to actually have cross connections between these particular devices. Now the point here is is that if this is my gateway that I use to be able to provide to or to afford my devices located down here say for instance this host that this gateway is going to be the way that I want to be able to get off of my Ethernet segment. The problem is, is if I lose this link, the issue is, is that I no longer have the capability to reach, reach my default gateway. Now without the default gateway, what ends up happening is, is I can't exit my segment. This is the type of layer three redundancy that we're talking about. And it's going to be extended to us in the form of a few protocols that we need to talk about. First and foremost, we're going to be talking about HSRP hot standby routing protocol. After that we'll mention VRRP and then we'll look at group load balancing protocol. Realizing that HSRP and group load balancing protocol are Cisco proprietary protocols that are going to allow us to be able to ensure that we have alternate methods to exit our infrastructure. Now from a 30,000 foot view what this is going to look like is, is we'll have our host and our host is going to want to be able to send information out to our core. Now what we're going to have here is, is obviously we're going to want to extend the ability to be able to have multiple ways of actually exiting the infrastructure. Now what's going to end up happening here is, is that we're going to utilize these connections to reach the core of our network. Now the idea here is, is my great my gateway that is being issued here is going to be the method that I'm going to use to send information out. Now what will end up happening here is, is I have two avenues that I can use to exit the infrastructure. However, it's important for us to understand that we're not going to want to use both of these at the same time. At least not in some of the more older, less developed protocols that we're working with in the context of HSRP and VRRP. Now, what ends up happening here is, is we're going to actually create a logical construct so what I want you to think of is me taking these two switches or these two routers and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a logical device that doesn't really exist. It's going to be a virtual router and that virtual router is going to allow me to be able to host a virtual IP address. Now that virtual IP address is going to be the actual address that's going to be used as my gateway of last resort on this host or my default gateway. Now what we're going to have here is we're going to have an arrangement whereby we have a standby and an active configuration. So actually I need to grab a pin. So it's going to be active and standby. So what will happen here is, is the active device is actually going to be hosting this virtual construct, the pseudo node that we're configuring in our infrastructure. Should I lose the connectivity out or should I lose this neighbor, what will end up happening is, is the virtual host will actually be set up and maintained by my standby router. So now if I lose this connection, what's going to happen is, is the gateway is actually going to move and I'm still going to be able to use multiple exits to exit my infrastructure. So the main thing here is, is that the truth of the matter is, is if we look at how the packets are actually being forwarded, in this scenario they go up, they go over to the virtual IP address and then they go out. Now if we lose this connection, for any reason whatsoever, it's important for us to keep in mind we're going to follow the alternate path where we come up, go over to the virtual instance that's being hosted by this router and now we have the capability of being able to exit our infrastructure. Now that means we need to understand exactly what's involved in this part of our deployment. 
This part of our deployment is where we're going to be setting up our group. Now, we'll have different types of groups, but right now what we're going to be talking about is an HSRP group, a hot standby routing protocol group. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the configurations on these devices such that we're going to have that active device and we're going to have the standby device, but we're also going to have this logical construct, this virtual device that's going to be hosted either by the active or the standby when the active goes down. Now this is going to give us the capability of being able to set up this configuration quite simply and we're going to even use a number of show commands to verify how things operate. So for instance, I'm going to have the concept of here which is going to be show standby which is going to show me the configurational requirements that are going to be involved in working with this. Now at the console level what we're going to end up doing is we're going to create the virtual IP and then what we're going to do is we're going to ensure that we create this group such that these devices are going to be able to communicate with each other. Keep in mind that our individual devices are going to be connected on an Ethernet segment and what we're going to do is we're going to exchange control plane information across this segment so that we can make certain that we have each device able to communicate with the other so that we can ensure that we're providing these services. Now at the command line, let's take a look at exactly what this looks like. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just simply going to take two devices and I'm going to show how we're going to be able to interconnect them. So what I would do is I would actually go to, say, a router. In this context, let me see here, I need to grab R1. Now in the confines of R1, to create this configuration, all I would do is go to Enable for the configuration, and once there, enter Config T, and then I'm going to go to my individual interface. So let's say interface G00. Now on the confines of this particular configuration, all I'm going to do is say Standby. Now I'm going to be able to specify a standby group. Now the moment I configure my standby group, I'm just going to say Standby 1, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to realize that I have the capability of specifying an IP address. This is going to be where I set up my virtual IP. This virtual IP address could be something like 10 .1 dot, let's say 100 and then what we'll say is 254. Hit enter. Now what we're going to see here is, is that the IP address is not within a subnet on this interface. It's throwing out an error because if you look at, look at what I have configured, do show run interface FA or G00, what's happening here is, is I have this IP address here, but I don't have an interface IP address configured. So what I want to do is on this interface, I'm going to go ahead and add an IP address. It needs to be in the range of my standby group. So I'm going to say IP address, I'm going to say 10.1.100.1.255.255.255.0. Now what we're going to find here is, is this process is immediately going to power up. It's going to be operational. I'm going to say show standby. And what I'm going to see is, is I'm going to have this group information that we want to be able to start exploring. Notice right now it's in the listening state, which means it's listening to see if there's going to be any other device that's participating in the group that's going to be, have the capacity of hosting this address. This address of 10.1.100.254. Now what we're going to see here is, is after the listening period expires, the system is going to say, okay, I'm going to move from standby to active. And the rationale behind that is, is that it did not receive any other information from any other member of this group. We haven't configured any, nor do I have any that's operational right now in my configuration. So again, what I want to look at here is, is through the use of this standby command, we have the capability of being able to implement HSRP. Now the thing that we need to understand is, is the significance of this active device, the active router. The active router is going to be the active forwarder. So in other words, it's going to be the device that's hosting this virtual IP address that we're using. Now what happens is the active forwarder is going to, do, is going to respond to the gateway request. So it's going to respond to the default gateway packets and it's going to respond using ARPS for address resolution protocol and it's also going to be housing a virtual MAC address that's going to correspond to the virtual IP. So what we see here is the virtual IP address is 10.1.100.254. We're going to see here that it's going to be using this MAC address. This MAC address is going to be constant 
with regard to the address that's going to be used by HSRP. And what we're going to realize here is, is that these last two numbers are going to be a hexadecimal representation of the group number. So looking at this, what we see is, is that the active virtual forwarder or the active forwarder is going to be handling all traffic that's going to be coming from our host. The standby is simply going to be sitting there waiting for a failure to be introduced into the system. Now another thing that we can also do in the confines of HSRP is that we can focus on the ability to be able to do tracking. We can track the status of an interface. So if I wanted to be able to do that, what I would end up doing is I could come into my configuration here and I'll simply go under this interface again, config T, interface G00. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into standby one and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use something called track. And it gives me the, ca the capability of being able to track an interface or track a tracked objects or tracked object. And then the whole idea here is, is that it gives me the capability of being able to specify what I'm going to be able to do. I can either decrement the process or I can shut the process down. Now also bear in mind when we start doing this assembly here where we're doing our standby one, again I can specify the IP address that we would be using. And also the thing that we want to understand here is, is that Cisco protocols do not support preemption by default. So if I wanted to ensure that one of these devices was definitely going to be the active forwarder in a deterministic fashion, one I'd have to set the priority such that I could pick the one that I'd want to be the actual forwarder and I would also want to make certain that I enable preemption possibly on both sides of the configuration so that when I lose my device that I want to be the forwarder, the standby is going to be able to take over but when the other device comes back on, I want it to become the actual forwarder again. So this entire process here allows me to be able to implement these entire scenarios. Also keep in mind, I could create a situation whereby I have my two gateways out of my infrastructure operating in my standby group where I have connectivity to the core going down to my Ethernet segment where I may have three devices that are going to be set up with default gateways. The default gateways would match the virtual IP address configured on the virtual router that's either going to be hosted by one of these two devices. Now, <clears throat> understanding what's happening here is, is I could, after a fashion, receive or set up some type of administrative load balancing. I could actually create two groups and make one device the failover for the other. That way I would have two virtual IP addresses and all I would have to do is make certain that I decided which virtual IP address was going to be used. I could split it half and half, I could put two on one, or I, I'm sorry, put one IP on two devices, or the other IP address on the other, and I can get some level of administrative load balancing. But the problem is, is that's going to be a relatively pain and a relative pain in the butt with regard to doing the configurations. Now the other thing here is, is that I also want to point out the fact that we have an industry standard protocol called VRRP. VRRP is not inside the scope of material that we need to know for the CCNA exam, but it's important to understand that the industry standards body looked at HSRP and decided that they would draft their own protocol that would accomplish relatively the same thing. And they did it by adopting a lot of the behavior associated with HSRP. Now Cisco came up and looked at this idea of being able to do this administrative load balancing which works in both HSRP and VRRP and they made the determination that that was good but it wasn't good enough. So what they did is they created another protocol referred to as group load balancing protocol. Now in the confines of group load balancing protocol what we have is we have our active forwarders, we have that virtual address but what we do is we create a GLBP group and what's happening here is, is that what we're going to find is, is that our hosts that are down here are going to automatically load balance across the two links. And we're going to use different algorithms to be able to accomplish this. So what's going to happen is, is that in each of these scenarios with a group load balancing protocol, all of these device are going to, uh, devices are going to be active virtual forwarders. Active virtual forwarders. The thing that we need to understand is, is one of these devices is going to be selected to be what is going to be referred to as an active 
virtual gateway. That's going to be the brains of the operation. It's going to control this entire process. So keeping in mind, what we have here is we have the capability of building a redundant infrastructure that's going to provide the capability of being able to work just like HSRP, but we're going to have the load balancing capabilities and enhancements. So if I want to be able to deploy this on my gear, all I would simply do is I would use the exact same approach, only here what I'm going to do is I'm going to say no standby, one. And what I'm going to say now is I'm going to say GLBP, one, IP, I'm going to specify the IP address that I want to use. Now I'll say 10.1.100.254. Now the moment that's done, do show group load balancing protocol, do show GLBP, I'm going to see the information associated with what I was talking about with regard to the configuration of group load balancing as it relates to how our systems are going to operate. Now these are going to be things that you're going to want to definitely experiment with in the confines of working in our devices. All you got to do is fire up GNS3, put two particular devices on a segment, fire up the processes and you're going to be able to see exactly what's going to happen in the background with regard to how to manipulate the process, how preemption is going to work, how you can use priority, how you can track interface status, how you can track tracked objects like IPSLAs. IPSLAs are outside the scope of our CCNA studies, but it's still definitely something that you may want to entertain looking at between now and the time that you actually start to pursue the CCMP if that's the decision or the choice that you make. So that rounds out the, con the con and concludes everything that we want to talk about in the confines of this particular module, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.